In the countryside of Eritrea, the youth of Africa's youngest nation are on tour. It's a busload of contradictions, a circus team brimming with teenage exuberance, which has come to tell of a country suffering. Young patriots with a story of a nation divided. Asmara is one of the most intriguing towns you'll find in Africa. Once an Italian colony, it sits at the crossroads of African and Arabic culture. Six years after Eritrea's independence, the city is host to the annual festival, a time to celebrate the country's progress. Represented are the nine cultural regions of Eritrea. It's a remarkable display of ethnic harmony. The 30 years of war that engulfed this country could easily have split it into warring factions along tribal and religious lines. Instead, Muslim, Coptic Christian, Catholic and animist combined in a secular struggle to create the state of Eritrea. The Eritreans have every reason to celebrate. They have shown a gritty determination to rebuild this country and in doing so have provided a role model within Africa. But it's a determination that has been forged by a generation that either had nothing or lost everything in the war. A generation that gave their lives for the struggle. But in the coming years, those memories will fade and soon this country's future will rest in the hands of today's youth. The question for them is as to whether they can find within themselves a matching determination. The capacity to build success upon success. At the festival, the country's future is undergoing its first public scrutiny. Performing is Eritrea's fledgling circus. The young troupe is under the command of Joshua Fesaha Yohannes, a former freedom fighter turned playwright. I wanted to entertain the children in general in Eritrea. Um, and uh, we want also to teach them just entertainment for entertainment's sake is just useless. The kids joined the circus to do acrobatics, but perhaps only in Eritrea would they find themselves spouting doctrine while juggling a tune about the war. I came with my script and told the story about Eritrean children in the past 30 years. They were just curious on doing it. 
Or everybody was saying who is going to be the mother, who is going to be the enemy, who is going to be uh, an American or, or uh, so one from Sweden, from one from Saudi and for one from Ethiopia, who is going to be, they were curious. It's a heavy responsibility that has been put on the children. Ocha has been rehearsing her role for months. At just 17, she plays the mother of Eritrea. تاريخ سلا بعيد قل الزلنا من جمرتنا عين استيس معني ده جنا هات سنة سنة دي ثلاث كاس كحجو سين تاريخ النات سلا زقت سلم زلنا بنجها تبزح ولا أم حاجز تيجي له كن كافت تاريخ خيال الكوس كم الدخينة هو سعي قبل إن كله يسحق أو لا يجرمني هزبة أخو مجير سلا زيت سبينس كجرم ويد You have to remember that the, these kids, they have never seen a, a proper circus show. Boom, boom! The reason, because you stop, is because suddenly the enemy is coming again. The circus director is Santiago Athera, actor and flamenco dancer, who's come to Asmara via Australia's Overseas Service Bureau. No, boom, boom, hey, pop! That's the reason, because you get afraid that you go back. You have seen that the, the resources that we got is just few mats, a um, few juggling tools. We have made okay. our own balls and one electronic organ and one monocycle, and that's all. So I try to use what we got, and what we got mainly is the strength of the group. After their warm-up act in Asmara, the circus is going on tour, but not just to entertain. Joshua, like so many of the ex-fighters, is a true believer, a publicist for a greater Eritrea, and the circus is his vehicle. Why not give them a circus that's just pure entertainment, that's fun? Why remind them of, of all the suffering that's been here? What I'm thinking is, or what uh, all the ex-fighters think is, uh, we have to teach the children. We have to keep it in mind. We have to preserve it. Um, because we have died, we have suffered a lot. We have to keep their country uh, as it is. We have protests their own country. An hour's drive out of Asmara, and you've traveled back a few centuries. This is how most of Eritrea lives. Having endured years of drought, the villages of Darok have at last been blessed with some of the best rainfall in memory. It's still an arduous existence, but today they're in for a treat and the locals have never seen anything quite like it. For the children, it's all a lot of fun, but the mothers and the grandmothers keep their distance. Tradition dictates they stay housebound. For the teenage girls, it's a moment of confusion. They've had a deeply conservative upbringing and they're unsure exactly what to make of the circus's antics. The country may be liberated, but the same can't be said for the women. If your daughter is going to be married, for example, she has to be a virgin. 
not to visit. <laughs> Even my, your mother checks. She just always, uh, she wants to hear something. Is she virgin or this virgin? If not, all the uh, neighbor, the neighbors will chat about this thing. Well, the son of... Uh, she is married, uh, he has married someone who is not yeah, intact. Yeah, <laughs> because that is a problem. Those who perceive a need for cultural change will have to wait. Just down the road from Duroc, you'll find the country's priority. The ditch diggers are students who've volunteered to spend their holidays rebuilding the country's roads. It's all about commitment and duty, and that mentality is all pervasive. <laughs> This is Kerin, the second largest town in Eritrea, and the circus is performing here this afternoon. While waiting, I went down to the local cafe and had a cup of tea. A beggar came up to me, held up his hands, and asked for the price of a cup of tea. But before I could answer, a voice next to me, an Eritrean voice, said, tell the old man to put his hands in the earth and do some work, not hold them up to the sky and beg in the name of God. A cup of tea in Karen costs one cent Australian. The circus has brought the town to a standstill. The most telling part of the performance is based on an actual event. Nobody but anybody! The children mistaking an enemy MiG fighter for an aid plane delivering food. They were told that the plane is going to send biscuits. Instead of hiding themselves, they came in the open air. They came from the trees and caves and said, Oh, the plane is coming, it's going to send biscuits for us. Then, because everything is out, everyone was out, and the plane came and bombarded the place and everyone was killed. This is a true story in the revolution. On the outskirts of Kerin, it's time for reflection. Joshua fought here during the war and the memories are a window into why there's such patriotism. It was horrible. <laughs> Sometimes uh, 10,000, 8,000, 9,000 soldiers come together. You fight throughout the day, you kill a lot of soldiers. Again, another 5,000 comes, you fight, they kill you, you kill them. You kill uh, thousands of soldiers and hundreds of your side are killed, if I'm going to remember now. No one is alive. That's in the continued war, most of them died. Joshua's first wife and his brother were also fighters, and both were killed in the trenches. Back in Asmara, the streets are humming with returnees. The years of conflict forced almost a third of the population to flee, either to neighbouring countries or overseas. Now they're coming back, but the people that Joshua and his generation are counting on, the young, don't see Eritrea as home, but as an alien culture. This is my first time after seven years in Asmara, and I mean, it's my country, I have to like it, but I don't like the people. I don't. I am from Germany. And in Germany, you have TV, you have clean water. You can do everything you want. Everything. And as far as. Wait. The people in Germany, they respect you. You know? They, they know, like, uh, thank you and welcome and something. But in this city, you don't. They, they know nothing. They, don't they have no tolerance. That, yes, they have no uh, thank you or something. They don't know. They have no respect. Asmara is good to come and visit. 
but not to live. I don't want to live here. If someone comes from America and if he wants to live in Asmara, well, if he's conscious and if he loves his own country, he has to, raise, he have to overcome all the problems which may face him here. You've written a play about the children of the revolution. In 20 years' time, what is the play you'd write about Ocha's generation? This generation may say we have reconstructed our own country. We have worked for the well-being of our country. We have worked just um, to put our country at the level of all the developed countries. We have worked just, we have done our duty. We have done our duty. This type of, yes, I believe that. It certainly isn't what Joshua would hope for his country, but in 20 years' time, what will be interesting is whether the playwright's words about the children of the past prove to be prophetic about the children of the future. Thank you.